won't this process run in my container? Where's mine on my workstation? Use Docker, they say. It will make things so easy. What a bunch of... Dude, what you doing? It's this process always run fine. Now they want me to containerize it. And I keep running into errors. I wish they'd just leave things alone and let me get back to more important things. Well, it looks like it's a permissions issue. Have you tried running it in oh, privilege mode just to see if that'll shoot, work? I forgot about that. Let me try. Hmm. Hey. Well, that was easy. Now it works. Okay. Now you need to go figure out what permissions it really needs yeah, instead. And sure. then you can um we'll figure that out in the next sprint. Right now, let's update the deployment manifest, commit it so I can get out the door. It's Friday. I'll put a ticket in the backlog to clean this up later. It's an easy mistake to make. It's just one process and probably not a critical one. You might think, what's the worst that could happen? Well, let's talk about it. Running your container in privilege mode simply means that all the safeguards that contain the processes running in it are pretty much turned off. Docker's description says that it will enable access to all devices on the host and allow the container nearly all the same access to the host as processes running outside containers on the host. It gives your contained process all the things. In my experience, this mode is usually used simply as an expedient way to just get something to work. And in almost every case, there's probably a more secure way to do that. In fact, I reached out to Jerome Petrozzoni. He's the original author of the Docker dash dash privileged functionality. His opinion is that, quote, there are very few valid reasons to use the privileged flag. He actually said that he initially wanted to call this feature flag dash dash insecure. That should tell you a lot about why it's not something you really should allow in your clusters. Let's take a moment to clarify what I'm talking about when it comes to running containers in privileged mode in Kubernetes. This is set up in a Kubernetes container spec via the security context privileged flag. If you set that to true, the kubelet's going to start your container with the equivalent of a docker run dash dash privileged command. Fortunately, this is not the default behavior, so omitting that flag is functionally the same as setting it to false. I do, however, think it's a good idea to explicitly set it to false, because then there's no ambiguity about it, and the next developer down the road knows that you set it to false for a reason. Consider an application running in a privileged container that has a remote or arbitrary code execution vulnerability in it. Perhaps you have a vulnerable version of uh, your middleware or a web framework library. A bad actor that exploits that could then mount host volumes, install software, and generally have their way in your cluster as if they had shell access right inside the host machine, because that's kind of what privileged mode is giving them. Hopefully, you're convinced that you should avoid using this. And if you're a cluster admin, you might be frantically searching your deployments to make sure it's not being used anywhere. By the way, Sneak's IAC scanning functionality can help you with that. Don't panic. <laughs> there are fairly easy ways to restrict this setting from being allowed to be used by any of your deployments. One popular solution is to run an open policy agent or OPA uh, admission controller in your clusters. And then you can configure a policy to block the use of the privileged true security context in all your containers. This can also be done in other tools like Kyverno or even in good old pod security policies or PSPs. Although as of this recording, PSPs are deprecated. So take that into account. So are there any valid reasons to use privilege mode? I'm sure there are. In fact, some of my friends that work on cluster monitoring tools have some interesting use cases, but for the vast majority of us, you probably don't need it. Now I'm going to include links to information about these policy enforcement tools, as well as the sneak ISC scanner I mentioned earlier, down in the description below the video. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and do all those things to catch the latest from us here at Sneak. Now let's get back to our clusters and start restricting privilege mode wherever you find it.